like you told me. Maniac Rob here from Board Game Maniacs to give you a content review box of the Board Game Labyrinth based off the 1986 movie with David Bowie and Jennifer Connelly. Now, originally when I was doing this video, I did an unboxing video where we ripped the plastic open, we went through it for the very first time, we reviewed everything inside of it. Uh, we had some technical difficulties, but I didn't notice until after we were done shooting. When I say we, I had a couple of my friends here, other maniacs to go over the unboxing as well as a little quick test play game right out of the box. But because of the technical difficulties and the footage did not work out the way I wanted to do, we're doing a content review of the box instead. So just stay tuned. We'll go over what's inside the box when you buy it, even though this has already been opened, it's already been played. Uh, the minis in here has already been painted by myself. But what we're going to do is just, again, just go over the contents, what's involved into it for anybody who is interested. And then if you really want to, you can either click on the link below or it's going to follow this video. It's going to be linked to the uh, content review box of a gameplay with me and a couple other board game maniacs where we play the actual game and see what happens. So just stay tuned for the content review box and have a good time board gaming. All right, Board Game Maniacs, this is the, the game I've been waiting for for a long time. It's by a company called River Horse and also Jim Henson for sure because it is based on the 1986 movie. As you can see here, it has the main characters onto it, Hoggle, the Goblin King Jareth. We also have Sarah, Ludo, and Sir Didymus. Now, uh, again, this is not really an unboxing video per se. This is just a content review because... The unboxing video did not work. So as you can see in here, it displays the five miniatures that you get. Now with these five miniatures, they come in a gray plastic resin. So again, I've already opened them. I already painted them and so forth too as well. So let's dive in the box and see what ha see what's in there. So right at the box, okay. Now right at the box, let's go over this first off. So. We have a multitude of different dye. So you can see you have a yellow dye, which is, again, I think this here is a nine-sided dice, if I'm not mistaken. 20-sided, 12-sided, 6-sided, 10-sided, uh, and a 4-sided dye. Now, just to let you know, um, I'll go over everything about the dice and everything, plus in the gameplay, when we do actually do play the game, you'll be able to see everything in action. Uh, when I played it with uh, the other board game maniacs, we had a lot of fun. Again, incredible game. Uh, some people had said that this game is very simple. It, it had a lot of bad reviews for what I researched it. Now, I don't know why. I love this game. I could be biased too as well because I'm in love with the movie that Jim Henson made in 1986. So again, I, this could be total bias, but just in case you're interested in purchasing this game, uh, I'm just going to give a quick unboxing video, or actually a content review video. Again, I keep saying unboxing. So when I say unboxing, just remember it is just a content review. So anyhow, moving forward. So we get a pack here with some uh, cardboard tokens into it. Let's see what's kind of in here. So in here you have tokens such as this. I don't know if you can get in focus there or not. These are called willpower tokens. So with every character that you have, you have a certain amount of willpower that you start the game off with. Now, during the gameplay, you can either uh, lose willpower or gain willpower, depending on when you draw a labyrinth card that gives you certain tests that you have to do. And if you fail, you may lose some willpower, or if you land on certain... Uh, certain spaces on the board like the bog stench and so forth too as well you can lose tokens now if you lose tokens and you're in gameplay you don't die which is really good because uh, when we played it was very easy to lose uh, willpower tokens uh, if you do lose all your willpower tokens pretty much uh, door will open up below your feet and you fall into the oubliette now the oubliette in the movie is where Sarah started out and uh, what happens is, if you go in the oubliette, you will go to sleep. 
So pretty much what you do is you miss your turn. So the first time when you miss your turn, you stand up, you wake up, and you gain a free willpower token. So again, you don't completely die. You start building up your willpower tokens. And your next turn, you can move or you can stay there and rest at the Oubliette and gain another willpower token. If on the board with the willpower tokens, if you want to gain another willpower token and you're not at the Oubliette, it, no big deal, because all you have to do is you roll a green side, uh, a green die, which is a six-sided die, and a four or higher, you gain a willpower, and that is your turn. So again, they have several willpower tokens here for the game. They're made of cardboard, very sturdy. It's great. Ah, now the next token, you see here, Ludo's onto it, and he's kind of plugging his nose. It's like, smell bad in the movie. So what these are, smell bad tokens. So what these small bad tokens are for, more or less, is that when Ludo, or not Ludo, but any character lands on the Bog of Eternal Stench, what happens is they roll a die. If they roll a one or a two, you fall into the Bog of Eternal Stench, and you get one of these tokens. Now with these tokens, what that means is that if you have one of these tokens, it's going to hinder your character into joining as a group. You have to roll a die, and if I do recall, you have to get uh, four or higher to be able to join the group because you stink really bad, as Ludo said to everybody, if you got this uh, sting token onto you. If you're all under four, then what happens is that you cannot join, the, join everybody else to keep going on with the game. You can still play the game, but you can't join as a group and move as a group. Now, moving as a group can be very beneficial to you in the gameplay because what happens is when you do play the game, you want to try to gain everything as a group so that when you come across like goblins and archers and everything else in the game, you roll as a team unless the card otherwise states differently. And rolling as a team, you just pick the highest. So, for instance, everybody rolls their brawn. So for Ludo, he's like a tank. He uses a black die for his brawn. And if the test says, hey, you gotta roll a, a you gotta roll a brawn versus like a purple die or what have you. So the bad guy always rolls first. After the bad guy rolls, you have to roll equal or higher. So if you're only like just say Sarah, for instance, she has a lower brawn. She could lose, but if you roll as a group, everybody as a group rolls. And where Ludo has a black die, he can roll up to 12, so it's better chance that as a group you're going to beat that test, like the goblin or so forth. So it's really good. So again, these are the uh, smell bad tokens. Alright, since we're in tokens, let's go over these things too as well. So in the game, um, I'm a little off camera here possibly, so this is your first player token. So what your first player token is, is the baby. So the baby's name is Toby in the movie. And if anybody's not familiar with the movie, what happens is that uh, Sarah, she don't want to look after her baby. Uh, it's not her baby, but her baby brother, I should say. Her parents go out and she has to look after baby brother and she's tired of it because she don't want to look after her baby brother anymore. So she wishes that the Goblin King would come and take him away to Goblin City so she don't have to care anymore about, the, about Toby. So... Again, this is in the movie, and it's also based off the movie, this game. So what happens is Goblin King has taken Toby to Goblin City. And Sarah, with her other friends, have to make it to Goblin City. They have to fight the main bad guys. So this, this is a humongo. This is the guy. He's really, really big. He was attached to the gate in the movie, and he came out, and he started fighting them. So again... This is the first foe that you have to fight. And again, you have cards for references to tell you how to fight them, and we'll go over that shortly. So this is Humongo that you're going to fight one of the bad guys. It's double-sided. These tokens here, or these clips, are actually just clips to hold your character. And so these plastic clips, you clip them on there, and then you sit them on, the, stand them on the board, it stands up. So when you get the Goblin City, you fight them. And there's a specific order that you fight your bad guys. So that's one of them, this Humongo. And you also have other other characters that you got to fight. Like this is the Calvary, the Goblin Calvary. That's another guy you got to fight at Goblin City. You have the Infantry, the Goblin Infantry. Again, you have to fight that. And the Goblin Artillery that you have to fight too as well. So again, after you get to the Goblin City, as a group or as just one, it's harder to, to, to beat these guys as one as a group. It's easier. So then once you do that, then what happens is that... You fight these guys and you go on to the Goblin King with his Jareth. 
Next thing we're going to go over, we'll go over the character cards that are into the, uh, into the box itself. So as you can see, Sarah. Now, each character, they have like a, their stats more or less. So for Sarah, when she moves or does any tests, she, for speed, she does with her purple dye. Purple dye for her wit and green for her brawn. Now, uh, in the instruction book, what it does say is that when you are moving, whether you're moving as a group or whether you're moving as an individual, uh, what you can do is you can go your full speed or you can pick a lesser die to roll to go a slower speed. Now, why you want to do that? Well, the reason why is because when you roll for your speed, you have to move exact numbers. So just say that you're trying to link up with Ludo and Ludo is four spaces away, but you roll a five, you don't, you can't link up with him because you're going to land on the space one after him. So again, you have to roll exact numbers. So that's why they say that you can take a lesser die and you can roll. So again, it, it, it does uh, have its benefits and it has hit its, um, it's negative sides too as well, but you know, it's a fun game, either or. So again, and also starting willpower, the tokens that I showed you with previously, which are these willpower tokens, uh, it looks like it's the Goblin King's eye, like the crystal ball. Oops, so that's what that is. So what that is, is it shows Sarah has a maximum of five willpower that she starts with. Now the other one is a clear crystal ball, so that means she only starts out with five, but Every character starts out with a different uh, amount of willpower. Now you can gain more willpower and you can lose more will willpower in the game. Now with this one here too as well, but any character, the maximum number that they can have is six. If you gain any more willpower after six, you just gotta throw the other willpower away so that's all you can have total. And once you lose your last willpower, you don't die, you just go back to Oubliette and you rest to start building it up. And also they have little quotes here for each character, so Sarah's I thought fairies did nice things like, I can't say it's kind of for granting wishes. So again, this here is just a little quote at the movie that Sarah said too as well. Um, I guess I should have my glasses on for this. Oh well. So again, here's another character card, Sir Didymus. Again, different character, different uh, stats for it. Sir Didymus is riding uh, Ambrosius, which is his uh, loyal sp speed, which is the dog. And so he's faster. He gets a, a black die, which is a 12-sided dice. And then what's a yellow and brown is purple. Again, everything could be different. Every side is different. His willpower starts at four, but he can get up to maximum of six. So now also, and he has a quote to as well, like, not if you throw down. Now, if you throw down your weapons, I'll see that you're well treated. So again, it, it's just something that Sir Didymus said into the book or into the book, into the movie. I'm so backwards right now. So yeah, he said this into the movie. And just on the back, it got some, you know, a little bit of, it says labyrinth, it's color coded. So each character has a different color. So forth. So again, that's Sir Didymus. I'm not going over all of them. Just to let you know, you have one for Ludo too as well. And previously where I said that Ludo is a tank, his brawn is rolling a black die, which is a 12-sided die. So he's a, like a tank. He's really strong. And he starts off with four willpower. And last but not least is Hoggle. So Hoggle's speed, he's a green die, D6. His wit, he's the smartest character. So again, he he's able to uh, battle wit test with a black die, which is a 12-sided die, and Bronn is a yellow one. He don't have a lot of willpower, because in the movie, Jareth kind of was persuading him to do everything, so three willpower, and so on. So therefore, that's all your characters. All right, next are the Labyrinth cards. So again, you do have quite a few Labyrinth cards, but not like a, a tremendous amount. And the reason for this being is when you were playing, uh, you have to go through all of these cards again. So like false arms, it's part of the movie. So test wit versus one red die. So the bad guy always rolls first success. Leave this card on your space. Fail. Lose one willpower and leave this card on the space. So we're going to go over spaces in the game board and that uh, afterwards. But again. Right now, I'm just going over some Labyrinth cards here. Again, there's different ones. A lot of them, well, most all of them are from the movie. So it's really, really good. So again, the two knockers, the doors with the knockers, if you remember that in the movies, test wit versus one purple die, success. Leave this card on the space. Fail. Lose one willpower and leave this card on the space. So again, 
The whole point of this game too as well is you have to go through all of these cards. And the reason why I want to go through all these cards, you have to find the uh, entrance to the Goblin City. I'm just seeing if I can find it here. Actually, it's probably right here, the first, last one. All right, so the entrance to the Goblin City. So when you play the game, uh, you have to go through the, uh, the contents of each of these cards. Some cards get discarded. Some cards are put onto the space on the board. The cards that are discarded, you put them on the bottom of the deck, like so. And then you just keep going, and as you cycle through the cards, you put them on the bottom. So it's out, but some cards stay in their space. Now, once you bring up the entrance to the Goblin City, that is the entrance to Goblin City, and that's what you want. So once you get to this card, and you flip it over, you automatically are trying to go to the Goblin City so that you can take on the main bosses, what you talked about previously, and you go to the Goblin King to fight the Goblin King. So again, it says here, leave this card on the space, place Jareth in this castle, place all guard stand-ups in the city. This space is considered to, to be next to the Goblin City space in the corner of the board, in the center of the board, I should say. So again, this is the card you need to get to, to uh, try to beat the game. And again, all of these are just like helping hands. So many, so many cards. And it's a lot of fun to play them too as well. You don't know what card you're going to flip over and you have to do all these tests to see if you can beat it. And again, some cards will say discard, so you put it on the bottom. Some of them also say, you know, put it on the space on the board. Now, one thing I'd like to point out to you too as well is that when you're playing this, and if the card says put the space on the board, it's going to fill up the space on the board and you don't want that because you need some empty spaces so that when you land on it, it makes you flip a card over so you can try to get the entrance to the Goblin City so that you can get closer to winning the game. The way that you, you uh, stack the cards per se is you find this card, entrance to the Goblin City, and you pull out 10 more cards. You put this on the cards and you shuffle these 10 cards. I grabbed a little more than 10, but I'm just giving you an example here. So after you shuffle the 10 cards, you take the rest that you sh and you shuffle them and you place them on top of the 10 cards. So in essence, what that means is that the Goblin City card will be within the bottom 10 cards, well, bottom 11 cards, really. So you have to keep doing that. And the way that they keep you guessing for the game so that you don't know specifically when you're going to get to the Goblin City by just looking at the cards. Oh, it's going to come up soon. The cards you discard, you're going to have to put them on the bottom. So you're keeping on doing this. So therefore, there's no way that you can keep track of where this entrance to the Goblin City is going to be. The bad guy cards or the, the main boss cards that when you get to the Goblin City that you have to battle to go up before you go up against the Goblin King. So. What's really good about this is if you're not sure how you do them and how you set them up, they actually have them all in order. So you have a number there. I don't know if you can get in focus there or not. So that's not bad. So you get the number. So again, you have to complete task one, two, three, four, all the way up since you get to Jareth. So the first boss you encounter is Humongous. So that big standy guy that's uh, kind of pretty much connected to the door. So, and it tells you test Bron versus one blue die. I'm not going to go over all of these cards because I want to leave some of this a little bit surprised to when you watch the uh, gameplay video and also to as well as if you want to buy the game, then you'll, it, it's not going to give everything away to you. But just to let you know, you got Humongous that you got to battle. Goblin Infantry, too, as well. Goblin Cavalry. The Goblin Artillery. And the Goblin King Maze. So again, this is kind of like, it's in the movie where uh, Sarah was trying to find the Goblin King to get back her brother and everything was just like out of a Doctor Who, uh, a book. So everything, stairs were upside down and everything, or actually from uh, one Nightmare on Elm Street movies, a Dream Warrior, Dream Master, Dream Child, that's what it was. So it was kind of like the same thing. I don't know if uh, Freddy, the, the movie, actually grabbed this idea from the uh, the movie Labyrinth or not, but who knows? Anyhow, so after you did all that done, there's one other thing you have to do. After you defeat Jareth, you do have to read the spell. After you go up against Jareth, the Goblin King, and you defeat him, you have to do one more task. And with this task, it's called a spell. So 
in the movie the labyrinth uh sarah the way that she finally beat it she beat it <laughs> the way she finally beat jareth the goblin king is that she recited uh I don't know if it was a poem or what have you, but she recited these lines that stopped him pretty much saying that she don't believe in him anymore and he don't have power over her anymore. So because of that, after you beat Jareth, you have to read this card, memorize a small amount of text and give it to another person so that they can look at it while you recite it. If you don't recite it, you fail and you don't beat Jareth. So again, very challenging. So Humongo, Humongous, I should say, Goblin, Infantry, Cavalry, Artillery, the King's Maze, and the Spell. So another thing you get is this cardboard uh, Goblin Clock. Now, Goblin Clock? What's a Goblin Clock? Well, really, if you notice, even into the movie, Sarah had a certain amount of time that she had to get to the Goblin City to save Toby. So a Goblin Clock actually has 13 hours. So the way this game works is so that you start off with... Uh, on the hour of one. So what you do is that when you and your group is playing the game, um, you're going to go, go through your turn and then after the last person does their turn, it's Jareth's turn and Jareth, his responsibility is to move the clock ahead one and so on and so forth until it gets up to the 13th hour. On the 13th hour, uh, what is you still got one final turn and then after that, if you don't get to the Goblin City or you don't beat Jareth, then game's over. You lose and Jareth wins. He takes Toby. He keeps him in Goblin City and he turns into a goblin. So you got to be careful with that. You want to try to not get Toby to turn into a goblin. So again, it, it's a, a cardboard cutout. It's nice and strong. You got the sword that turns around to keep, clock, keep track of the hours, which is really good. Really cool artwork too as well. Um, you know... One thing too is all I want to mention at this point is the amount of people that can play this game. It is actually designed for like a, a one to four player game. You can play three players, you can play two players and so forth. If you're playing one player, you control all of the heroes. If you're playing a two player, you split the heroes up and so on and so forth. If you're going to play a five player game, then the fifth player will play the Goblin King Jareth and he moves this and also two as well as... It's explained into the book. I don't want to get into too much detail and give too much stuff away, but pretty much you can play up to five players into this. Now, also too as well, what I did notice for doing more research is there's supposed to be an expansion coming out for this game, and I hope they do because I really love this game and the gameplay. And it has to do with, you get more miniatures. It's the goblins that you get to fight. So we'll see if that comes out. So this is the goblin clock. I guess, you know, doing the content review, it's good to look at the, you get a, instruction book. Now what's really good is some board games you get is overwhelmingly like 50 pages or so forth with uh, instructions. Now you get some pretty cool artwork from the movie. There's Toby and Ludo and Hoggle, Serdidimus and Ambrosius. Now there's only 17 pages for this book. So again it goes over everything that you need to. I'm going backwards but in any case you know some artwork that talks about what happens if you come up against this and so forth. The, the instructions are very clear once you read them and you can start playing it and so forth, which is great. So again, you can see here too as well, nice little artwork from the movie. Such, such a great job for laying out these instructions too as well. So again, it's not an overwhelming uh, instruction book. I know that some board games, when I buy them, I open up, they got this like thick encyclopedia book of rules and I just I get so discouraged right away but this one here small little booklet of 17 pages no time at all to play gives a little bit of credits too as well some great artwork involved into it and also in here one thing I want to point out to you is there is actual a specific uh, order you play the game with with the characters so again you start off with Hoggle and it goes on to, all the way up to the last character which is Sarah before uh, Goblin King Jareth so again really great read this through if you get it it's very simple very fast to read and you can play the game within five ten minutes very easily again it's here you can always refer to it so that it's very straightforward there's no uh, second guessing anything if you do watch the the uh, gameplay it's the very first gameplay video that we did as a group 
So we didn't know anything about this, so we just started playing it. We didn't read through the rules first. We just kept going through it. And sometimes we had to stop so that we could read, just like any other game. Stop the video, read the game, the rules that we came across. But anything that we weren't sure of, we found it in the book very quickly and very easily. Again, because it's only 17 pages. Some people may be waiting for this part, so we'll talk about the miniatures here. So I'm just gonna grab out Hoggle right here. Again, when these start, when you get them, they're not painted. They come in a, a gray, a gray plastic resin, I think it is. And they're so easy to paint. They're great detailed, uh, the, you know, like, again, it brings you back to when you first watched that movie. When I was a kid and I watched this movie and I started painting these, I couldn't help but start laugh a bit or giggle because I'm like, oh, this is awesome. I'm actually, you know, involved in the labyrinth in some way. So. How I painted these, I actually went online and I searched up some tutorials and one tutorial that I found that I thought was really, really good was by a company called uh, Tabletop Troubadour, I think it's called. And uh, the guy who uh, goes over how he painted them in a, a different way than other tutorials, it's kind of like a, a one video for everyone and he goes through stages so he has like a, a play gray a plain gray figure and then he goes to the next figure where he has step one step two and step three and so forth he don't actually physically show you how he painted them but he tells you how he painted them and he also gives you a list of what types of paint he used and i followed that as close as i could i painted with citadel paint the same as which he did and i followed his steps too as well uh his name is johnny i don't know what his last name is he works for wetter workshop but what he did is uh, really cool is he is the man who was responsible for sculpting all of these for the game. So he sculpted them, he knew the miniature inside and out because he sculpted them and he painted them to his wall. So because of that, easy to follow tutorial, great. So again, this is Hoggle. You can see the detail into him too as well. I even painted the whites of his eyes. Again, when you get down this small, you don't have to put the pupils or the whites of the eyes or anything, it's up to you. It was in the tutorial, so hey, I did it. So there's Hoggle. Let's grab Sarah. Bring Sarah up to the camera. So there's Sarah, you can see. She's got her vest. You could put, uh, in uh, Johnny's video, he got like designs on the vest you can put in or you can leave it plain. I left it plain because I wanted to get them painted so that we can play the game. Now, it only took me an afternoon to paint these figures, so it was pretty easy. So again, there's the back of Sarah. Great detail into the miniatures and they come with it on the base. So it's a one piece, you don't have to glue anything together like other board games. It's all one and you just paint them and away you go. And here's the Goblin King right here. So he's holding his uh, crystal ball. His back is pretty cool. Again, this is all based off of Jim Henson's designs from the movie The Labyrinth. Really cool. Whites of his eyes. I did an okay job painting them. Followed the tutorial, very easy. Sir Didymus. Now, He's in the video with uh, Johnny when he talks to this. This is the last miniature he paints. And the reason why he puts this last, he said this is kind of like the most tedious of all because Ambrosius blanket, as you can see, it got all these little different designs painted onto him. So, Sir Didymus, the fox, Ambrosius, the dog, and it's all painted. So, which is really cool. I really, really liked painting these miniatures. And the video was very easy to follow. And last but not least, Ludo. Again, he likes rocks. Rocks are his friend. So again, different layers painted off. Very, very easy. He was probably the, the most easiest to paint. And uh, the order of paint painting tutorial in the video that Johnny goes over, he starts off at Ludo first. And then I think he goes to Hoggle. Hoggle and then Sarah. The Goblin King, and then Sir Didymus last, because he has the most detail into him. So there's a board game. Now, to talk about size-wise, this is a good size board game to play. I'll grab the biggest character, which is Ludo, put him on the board so you can kind of see the size difference. So again, um, I think this board is possibly like two by two, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't actually pull out the measuring tape and measure it, but it's a good size board game. Don't take up a whole lot of room. So let's look at the board game in its entirety. So with this too as well, first off, it is, as you can see, folds up. In the center you have the Goblin City. You can see a little 
figure, I don't know if you can see that on your screen or not, but it's Toby going into the, into the castle of the Goblin King. So, and you can see each of these spaces, you have like a, a transparent outline. So this is where the bad guys are, or the bosses, I should say. So, and as you go around, this is where you fit all of your cards. So again, the Labyrinth cards, you, you land on an empty space with the character. When your turn, you flip your, the Labyrinth card over and you read it and some of them will tell you. Uh, if you succeed or even if you fail to as well, leave this card onto the space. And as I said before, when you're playing this game, you wanna to try to keep as much of these spaces as empty as empty. So the reason why is so that when you flip over the gates of the Goblin City, or the entrance of the Goblin City, you have a space that, you know, it's going to go on. So again, some will say, hey, you have to leave this down, even if you beat it or not, if you don't beat it, or some of you have to discard and so forth. So again, they fit nicely into the outline. Also, moving on to as well, as you can see, I don't know how well you can see this, but right here, this here is a different shape as opposed to all the other ones. The reason why is because this is the Bog of Eternal Stench. So when you're playing, if you land on this again, you have to roll the green die and read the instructions in the book into telling you what happens if you roll like a uh, one to two or four or higher for to get it smell bad token and so forth. So you get the Bog of Eternal Stench and this is where Sir Didymus starts right here when you're starting the game. Uh, right here, I think, is where Hoggle starts. If I'm, no, Hoggle don't start here. This will be Ludo. Ludo starts here, but again, there's no uh, different shape space. So again, this is just normal space. Here is a different one, though, down here. Uh, it's kind of off camera. I'll move the board up for you, right here. So this is the Oubliette. So this is where Sarah starts. So whenever you land on the Oubliette space, what happens is you automatically go to sleep. So when you go to sleep, you pretty much you're going to miss a turn so that you lay your character down. So if you're playing, I'm just going to use Ludo again because he's the closest one. You land on Oubliette, you automatically go to sleep. So pretty much it's like you're missing a turn. So, you know, you're there, you're chilling, you're sleeping, you're having a rest. So, you know, like, oh, I'm missing a turn, this is no good. But there is a benefit to this, though, if you go to Oubliette and you go to sleep because your next turn... You stand up, you wake up, and you automatically get a willpower token. And that's only if you have less than six. If you have six, you can get another willpower token, but it gets discarded right away because the maximum for any player is six willpower tokens. So that's your next turn, and you can proceed. So just say you're around here or what have you, and you got one willpower token left and you need some. There's two things you can do. You can either rest for your turn and roll a green die. And if you rest for a turn and roll a green die, if you get a four or higher, you're gonna get a willpower token, but that's your turn. You can't travel around the board anymore. Um, if you get to here, you automatically go to sleep and you rest. And when you, get, when you wake up, you don't have to roll any die whatsoever to get a willpower token. Because when you wake up, you get a willpower token because you're an oubliette. And this is where Hoggle starts too as well. So again, there's no special uh, space for this. It's just a standard space. So the only special uh, spaces on the board again is the Oubliette and the Body of Eternal Stench. And then obviously, you know, the Goblin City where you have the bosses and Jareth too as well. So all you board game maniacs, I hope you enjoyed the uh, content review of the board game Labyrinth and its contents, the miniatures and so forth. Again, I can't stress enough how much fun this was to play. Uh, all of our other maniacs have played this, really liked it too as well. So if you're not sure about getting this game, on a personal note, I would definitely recommend it. It'd be a game even for younger children to play, easy to follow. Um, I can't really say too much more about this game because again, very enjoyable. I loved it a lot. It was incredible. So if you liked the video and you want to see some more content reviews or some unboxing videos or more gameplay videos, Comment below in the descriptions. Let us know what games you would like to see or if we played it or so forth. If you have any questions about the board game, also comment below. We'll be more than happy to get back to you. Um, I'm going to read all the comments when we get them and so forth. And I will reply right on the comment section below in a timely fashion. So please, comment 
thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you very much for watching my video on uh, the opening content of the Labyrinth board game. So until next time, play some games, be a little crazy, have some fun, talk to people, and don't forget, be a maniac, just like me. Board game maniacs, Maniac Rob here. Have a good night.